the Prophet ﷺ ordered the salah to be people to to be gathered for salah. I don't know what kind of salah. Because he's, he ordered them to say, As salatu jami'ah. As salatu jami'ah, this is not the normal prayer. There's something. Either for istisqa, either for uh, something. It's not the normal prayer. Anyway, he, he gathered them. Hadith is narrated uh, by Ab Amr ibn al-As in Sahih Muslim. He said, إِنَّهُ لَمْ يَكُنْ نَبِيٌّ قَبْلِي There is no prophet that I passed before me. إِلَّا كَانَ حَقًّا عَلَيْهِ But it was incumbent upon him. Obligatory. أَنْ يَدُلَّ أُمَّتَهُ عَلَى خَيْرِ مَا يَعْلَمُهُ لَهُمْ That he guides his nation to the best thing that he knows for them. وَيُنْذِرَهُمْ شَرَّ مَا يَعْلَمُهُ لَهُمْ And he warns them from the most evil thing he knows for them. وَإِنَّ أُمَّتَكُمْ هَذِهِ and this nation of yours, the healthy mode of it was set in the beginning of the nation. The healthiest mode. وَسَيَكُونُ فِي آخِرِهَا And at the end, stage, period of your nation, there will be bala, there will be trial, tribulation, wa umurun tunkirunaha, and things that you will be sad with, you will dislike, you will hate to see. Wa ta'ti fitnatun, a trial will come. فَيَقُولُ الْمُؤْمِنُ هَذِهِ مُهْلِكَتِي The believer will be saying, this will be my parish. Not necessarily his death. Parish in faith. فَيَقُولُ الْمُؤْمِنُ هَذِهِ مُهْلِكَتِي This is, a, this will be causing me parish. ثُمَّ تَرُوحُ Then this fitna will go. وَتَجِيءُ الْفِتْنَةُ Ah, I forgot this. يُرَقِّقُ بَعْضُهَا بَعْضًا What's the meaning of يُرَقِّقُ بَعْضُهَا بَعْضًا? يعني, when you fall in the, when you see that fitna, you see, oh, this will be perishing me. Then this fitna will be considered to be softer than the next fitna coming. So the next will be harder than the first. The latter will be harder than the former. Then the next fitna will come and he will and he'll be saying, Oh, that's it, that's it, this is the one. We are living in that fit fitna period of time. If you don't feel it, that means you are ghafil, uh, heedless, unawake, unconscious. How many people? They think they're okay. They're not. Yeah, we're joking. We're, we're making fun. We're going on Saturday, jo enjoying. We're, we're okay. You will see at the Day of Judgment who will be okay. You will see. I was speaking to a non-Muslim and I was saying to him, you know this life is short, it's short, then we're going to die. He said, yeah, indeed I agree with you. So let's enjoy life before we die. I said, this is not what I meant. I meant that you have to be careful and prepare for your death, not by enjoying yourself. 
but making preparation for the next life. That's what I meant. He said, no, enjoy, because you die only once. I say, yes. <laughs> you die, then you say, oh God, return me to life. I'm going to be good. Wallahi, Allah, I'm going to be good. Just return me. So, what does it sound to you? The people are, they are unconscious while they are conscious. That's a fact. Okay. Then the Prophet says, the hadith continues. فَمَنْ أَرَادَ أَنْ يُزَحْزَحَ عَنِ النَّارِ Yuzahzah means he is falling and somebody is moving him. This is the zahzah. This is the action of zahzah. Pushing, to be pushed hardly from hell. فَمَنْ أَرَادَ أَنْ يُزَحْزَحَ عَنِ النَّارِ Whoever wants to be pushed away from hell. وَيَدْخُلَ الْجَنَّةِ And to be admitted to paradise. فَلْتَأْتِهِ مَنِيَّتُهِ Let his moment of death comes on him. وَهُوَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ While he believes in Allah and the hereafter. وَلْيَأْتِ إِلَى النَّاسِ الَّذِي يُحِبُّ أَنْ يُؤْتَى إِلَيْهِ And let him treat people, do to people what he likes people to do for him. That means don't be selfish. If you wish them to do the good for you, so you, good, you do the good for them. وَمَنْ بَايَعَ إِمَامًا and whoever gave bay'ah to an imam, to a leader, فَأَعْطَاهُ صَفْقَةَ يَدِهِ Giving him the pledge of his hand. وَثَمَرَةَ قَلْبِهِ And the fruit of his heart. وَمَنْ بَايَعَ إِمَامًا فَأَعْطَاهُ صَفْقَةَ يَدِهِ وَثَمَرَةَ قَلْبِهِ فَلْيُطِعْهُ مَسْتَطَاعُ Let him obey him as much as he can. وَلْيُؤَدِّ حَقَّهُمْ And let him give the right of those who are given authority over him. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ سَائِلُهُمْ عَمَّ اسْتَرْعَاهُمْ For Allah is going to be bringing them to account that means he's going to be questioning them for the authority he gave them. Beautiful hadith. Beautiful hadith. After mentioning this hadith, a man came to the Sahabi and said to him, this is your cousin Muawiyah. He's ordering us. to use our property and money wrongfully. What is this? When there was a fight between Muawiyah and Ali radiallahu anhu, Muawiyah was taking some money in order to support for the war. That's what it means. So what shall we do? Amr ibn al said, أَطِعْهُ فِي طَاعَةِ اللَّهِ وَعْصِهِ فِي مَعْصِيَةِ اللَّهِ Obey him as long as he is. Obey him for the sake of his obedience to Allah. And disobey him regarding the disobedient things to Allah. The Shia come and claim that, you know, the Amawi, the Amawite period, Khilafa. They used to be supervising the hadith of, the, of Ahlul Sunnah. Penetrating, mixing, hacking in the books of the hadith, whatever the desire, which goes for the favor of Bani Umayyah. And whatever is for the favor of Ahlul Bayt, they, they remove them. That's a lie. What about this hadith? What about this hadith? There are many hadith that are against 
uh, are, are against uh, Muawiyah, uh, uh, against uh, Bani Umayyah. For example, Salah ibn al-Aqwa, he was rude against the Sahaba of Rasulullah, against Anas, <laughs> against Salah ibn al-Aqwa, uh, I mean uh, al-Hajjaj, Ibn Yusuf al-Thaqafi. He was rude. And all of these things are mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. That's a lie. Muawiyah said, that's in Sahih Muslim. Muawiyah said to, Sahil, to Sa'd, what, what was the thing that stopped you from insulting Aba Turab, yani Ali ibn Abi Talib? He said, there are three things that caused me to stop. He said, what? He said, the Prophet Sallallahu said, من كنت مولاه فهذا علي هو مولاه and لا يحبك إلا مؤمن ولا يبغضك إلا منافق he mentioned many hadith he said after that I never involve myself involve my tongue in anything against علي رضي الله عنه so that was good there are many so we're not gonna discuss this now but I just wanted to give you an example this hadith shows the importance of being very careful regarding this fitna that surrounds every Muslim. That you have to seek knowledge, to be aware, to be, to be aware about the things that go around you, lest you fall in the fitna. How many people, they have adopted an ideology, the next day they adopted another one. Every period of time you see them changing, changing. What is the matter? They did not root themselves in knowledge. And I can guarantee to you, as long as you read the Quran, just dedicate yourself for one year. Keep reading the Quran with full understanding. And fill your time with learning hadith. It doesn't require with you not more than one hour a day or two hours maximum. For six months if you want. And you'll be, I guarantee to you that inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be saving you from those fitan. That's why I wanted to, to mention this hadith. Now we come to the issue of At-Tahawiyah. At-Tahawi said, this is the session number 16. <laughs> Regarding explaining at He said, وَنُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّوْحِ وَالْقَلَمِ وَبِجَمِيعِ مَا فِيهِ قَدْ رُقِمْ And we believe in the preserved tablet, لوح المحفوظ, and the pen, القلم, and in everything written in it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the pen to write everything that is going to happen until the day of judgment. Everything, all details. That's why the Prophet ﷺ, when he mentioned, when he said, وَاعْلَمْ أَنَّ الْأُمَّةَ لَوْ اجْتَمَعُوا عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَضُرُّوكَ لَمْ يَضُرُّوكَ أَلَّا بِشَيْءٍ قَدْ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكَ وَأَنْ اجْتَمَعُوا عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَنْفَعُوكَ لم ينفعوك إلا بشيء قد كتبه الله لك. And know well that if all the ummah had gathered in order to harm you, they won't harm you the least except what Allah had allowed you to be harmed. And if they all gathered to set up a benefit for you, they won't be able to give you any benefit but the benefit that Allah allowed for you. رفعت الأقلام the pens had been raised up, finished. That means raised up from writing. That means writing everything had taken place already. There is no event that is going to change what had been written. Rufi'at al-Aqlam, the pens are raised. Wajaffat al-Suhuf, and the papers are dry. That means the ink that was used on the papers become, became dry, finish. That's what the Prophet ﷺ said. So 
So he said, فَلَوْ اجْتَمَعَ الْخَلْقُ كُلُّهُمْ عَلَى شَيْءٍ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى فِيهِ أَنَّهُ كَائِنٌ لِيَجْعَلُوهُ غَيْرَ كَائِنٍ لَمْ يَقْدِرُ عَلَيْهِ if all created beings were to gather together to make something fail to exist, whose existence Allah had written on the tablet, they would not be able to do so. وَلَوْ اجْتَمَعُوا كُلُّهُمْ عَلَى شَيْءٍ لَمْ يَكْتُبْهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى فِيهِ لِيَجْعَلُوهُ كَائِنًا لَمْ يَقْدِرُوا عَلَيْهِ جَفَّ الْقَلَمُ بِمَا هُوَ كَائِنٌ إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ And if they were all together to make something exist which Allah had not written it, they wouldn't be able to do so. The pen has dried having written down all that will be in existence until the day of judgment. It's a decreed matter. It's finished. Subhanallah. The speech of Allah, kalamullah, is ever greater than it can be imagined or limited. Look how Allah described his uh, described his kalimat. وَلَوْ أَنَّمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ مِنْ شَجَرَةٍ أَقْلَامٌ وَالْبَحْرِ يَمُدُّهُ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ سَبَعَةُ أَبْحُرٍ مَا نَفِدَتْ كَلِمَاتُ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ And whatever trees, if all the trees were, became pens, that means all the trees were manufactured to become pens, not to use for heating, not to use for boats, not to use, no, 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 only for pens. And the sea was ink, Rep, uh, replenished thereafter by seven more seas, the word of Allah wouldn't be exhausted. Indeed, Allah is exalted in might and wise. Yani even even this, the sea is supported by seven seas, backed by seven seas, to be enough for the ink, for the, for this, for the sake of writing, the words of Allah will not... will. The pens will finish before the words of Allah will finish. Inna Allah azizun hakim. For Allah is exalted in might and wise. Ma khalqukum wa la ba'thukum illa ka wahida. Ya Allah, that ayah shows the power of Allah. The creation of you and your resurrection in the matter of creating is to Allah as creating one soul and resurrecting one soul. It's equal. You can lift five kilos, but if I add 50 kilos, difficult. If I add another 50 kilos, how can you lift them? More lifting, more difficulty. But to Allah, whether to create 10,000 trillion or creating one, is, there is nothing more difficult and easier to Allah. All are easy, equal in Allah's power. In Allah, in Allah's unimaginable power. SubhanAllah. أَلَمْ تَرَ أَنَّ اللَّهَ يُولِجُ اللَّيْلَ فِي النَّهَارِ وَيُولِجُ النَّهَارَ فِي اللَّيْلِ وَسَخَّرَ الشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرَ كُلُّ يَجْرِي إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ مُسَمَّى وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ خَبِيرٌ I love the Quran. I love the Quran. It's great, Allah. Don't you see that Allah causes the night to enter the day and causes the day to enter the night and has subjected the sun and the moon, each running its course for a specific for a specific specific time or term, sorry, for a specified term. And that Allah 
with whatever you do is well acquainted, fully acquainted. This is great. Verily, no doubt, certainly, that when you cover themselves with their clothes or with garment, certainly, even if they were to cover themselves with garments, over garments, over garments. Look, Allah didn't say, even if they do that, He will be able to see them. No. He didn't say that. He said, even if they do that, Allah knows what's in their hearts. And he, they are already covered by the body. The heart that, that uh, intends something, the heart is covered by a body, by flesh and bones. And yet Allah knows everything inside it. So don't be fool to say that I can cover myself or stay in separate room or private room. So I'm living privately. I have full privacy. No, not full. Privacy, yes. Full privacy, no. ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْحَقُّ وَأَنَّمَا يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِهِ الْبَاطِلِ وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْعَلِيُّ الْكَبِيرِ That is because Allah is the truth. And that what they call upon other than Him is falsehood. And because Allah is the most high, the grand. These ayat are so beautiful. They build a doctrine and ideology in you. They build. Then he was saying, uh, at tahawi وَمَا أَخْطَأَ الْعَبْدِ لَمْ يَكُنْ لِيُصِيبَهُ وَمَا أَصَابَهُ لَمْ يَكُنْ لِيُخْطِئَهُ And what had the servant reached it was not supposed to miss him from reaching him. And what had missed him, it was not supposed to reach him. I say, This gives the servant a power and bravery, and trust, confidence. And this is linked. That will be affecting what? The matter of speaking the truth. Because speaking the truth will not be changing from what is written on you. Oh, I'm afraid if I speak the truth, I'll be deprived from my rizq, from my job. No. One person, he is the manager. He said to one of the employees, you have to remove this. I don't like to see it. Or you'll be deprived from your job, from your rizq. Then he said to him, وَهُوَ خَيْرُ الرَّازِقِينَ He is the best provider. He left him and went away. وَهُوَ خَيْرُ الرَّازِقِينَ Allah, Allah is my provider. And if a person leaves something for the sake of Allah, Allah will make up things better for him. You don't know. You may lose money and the compensation will be faith inside. So which is better now? People should be... You should, you should know that the 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 uh, the pledge the the uh, what do you say how do you so, say that al-ahd yani the contract covenant the covenant was taken on the companions an yaqulu al-haqq walaw kana murra that they speak the word of truth even if it's bitter وَأَنْ يَقُولَ الْحَقَّ وَلَوْ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ And that he should be speaking the truth even if, even if it's against himself. 
And that he should be speaking the truth, fearing for the sake of truth. No one to blame. This is the doctrine of Islam. Then he was quoting the ayat. Say, never will be struck except by what Allah has decreed for us. He is our protector. And upon Allah, let the believers rely. <coughs> then as a, as a refutation to those hypocrites. You know those hypocrites when, when there was a great injury in the companions at Uhud, I think. They said, لَوْ كَانُوا عِنْدَنَا مَا مَاتُوا وَمَا قُتِلُوا They said, those hypocrites, they were blaming. Why do you have to put these burdens on? We told you it's not the right time to fight. It's not the right time to go and c confront those people of Mecca. That's not the right time yet. That's why, look, they died. They're not, they're not with us here now. So Allah is refuting them, saying... It is Allah who, who gives life and gives death. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watchful for what you do. And if you are killed in the cause of Allah or die, then forgiveness from Allah and mercy are too better than whatever they accumulate in this world. Subhanallah, ma ajmalah. The mercy and forgiveness of Allah is better, is better than, all, what, all, than all what people collect in this life. What, do you, what, what people are struggling for? Is there anything better than struggling to achieve Allah's forgiveness and mercy and salvation? What is better than that? That's why you see people at, you know, when you go out at 8.30, can't you speak to, to a person? No, 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 they are so rushed. And you'll be disturbing them if you say to them, excuse me, uh, can you guide me to such, uh, um, can, you, can you guide me to that place? I don't know where to, uh, sorry, sorry, I'm so busy. They're so rushed, busy. For what? For what saves them? No. No. وَلَئِن مُتُّمْ أَوْ قُتِلْتُمْ لَإِلَى اللَّهِ تُحْشَرُونَ And whether you die or are killed, unto Allah you'll be gathered. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ Subha. By, by what mercy, O oh Messenger of Allah, you were lenient with them. You were so soft. He was very soft with his companions. Very soft. I'll mention to you a beautiful story. Sometimes I cry, but I'll, not, I'll try, not to try not to cry now. I don't want to cry. Many times I say, I don't want to cry. But sometimes I can't control myself. One of the companions of the Prophet, he was one of the soldiers. He's not really known. He's not a famous companion. As the Prophet was fixing the lines of the Muslims as preparation for the war, there's a man whose name was Sawad. Sawad in English means darkness. The Prophet had a stick in his hand. So he hit him with a stick. He was pushing him to the back with his stick. And the Prophet, we should not forget that the Prophet was given the power of 30 people. That drifts me to another story. There was a wrestler. You know the wrestlers? There's nothing I ever hate to see ever more than those wrestlers. They're, because they're all liars. 
But there was a man in Medina, his name was Rukana. Rukana, he was the wrestler of Medina. No one can knock him down. Can, can do K, huh? K off? K-O. No one can make K-O to him. Once he said, Oh Prophet, I want to wrestle with you. The Prophet said, <laughs> Okay. As he started to catch, the Prophet kneeled him down and knocked him down. And he was not able to move under the Prophet. صارع رسول الله ركانة صارعه فصرعه خلاص ركانة cannot move the prophet was given the power of 30 persons so when the prophet hit Sawad with his stick Sawad said oh that hurts oh messenger of Allah you hurt me you are fair I know you are fair and just he said, yes. The Prophet understood what he wants. He took clothes just like that, and sh showing his stomach, and he said, take your right back from me. <coughs> he said, that's fair. The man was saying, that's fair. Then he jumped on the Prophet ﷺ and started to kiss his stomach. The Prophet said, what caused you to do that, Sawad? He said, you know, O Prophet, that these moments are the last moment. I don't know, I may die. And I want the last thing of me be that my skin touches your skin. How beautiful is this? So let's get back to the first story. You know, story takes me to another. Story takes me to another. What shall I do? That's your fitna with me. Yeah. So one Sahabi who was not known, he had a very, you see this, the, the, the feather on your, uh, his shoes was so thick and um, with this kind of, uh, what do you call it? Feather. So the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, as he was fixing the lines, he was on the back of the Prophet وسلم, and the Prophet was giving him his back and the man was giving the Prophet's back like this. And this man undeliberately, unwillingly, he stepped over the foot of Rasulullah وسلم, and that was really hurting. Then the Prophet turned as he was turning saying Bismillah and his stick was, was with him. Remember, the Prophet was so strong. And that's what he said. That I was given the power of 30 people. And also Musa was so strong. Musa was hitting this, this, the rock because the rock fell down with his clothes on him. Uh, on, on the stone. And Musa was really ashamed because he was taking a bath alone. And he had to follow the stone to bring his clothes. And he was hitting because of his confusion and timidness. He, just, just that, he was just hitting like this. And the stone was affected by his hand. No wonder what happened to the eye of the angel when the Prophet Musa saw, saw him having the image of a human being and he was inviting Musa for death. He said, it's your time for death. That's another story now. I don't want to take you to it. So the Prophet ﷺ, as he was turning to the back like this, he hit the man with his stick. 
And he said, Bismillah, oh, Jatani. Oh, Bismillah, you, you hurt me. Oh, my God. This man went home, went back home. He was blaming himself all the night. He could not sleep. He said, woe unto you. How rude you are. You hurt the prophet's foot. The prophet felt pain because of you. He said, Allahu A'lam, how was that night I spent? It was a horrible night. Next day, the prophet told someone to call him. And when he heard his name, he said, what? Yeah, that's me. He said, the prophet wants you. He said, that's it. He's going to punish me now. Alas. That's my parish. I'm sure. The Prophet ﷺ said to him when he came, Do you remember yesterday I hit you with my stick? He said, No, it was me, O Prophet. I, I caused you pain. I s stepped over your foot. He said, Yes, but I hit you because of that hit. I decided to give you 80 naja, 80 sheeps are all for you. Just um, to make it up for you for what I did to you. MashaAllah, this is not a civilized, this is the dark age, uncivilized people since 1400 years. I wish. I wish that Allah can return history to the back we could, so we can live back at that time. I wish this is Wallahi the civilization. The leader of the Ummah hit this person undeliberately and he gave him as a compensation what? 80 sheep. What do you expect? The man was afraid. He said, Khalas. My punishment is on the way. He didn't know that his reward was on the way. Really, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is a gift of mercy. Is a gift of mercy from Allah. And yet they say, Islam is terrorism. We? We didn't kill 70 million people in the First and Second World World. We didn't kill 25 million Indian Americans to dominate America, the continent of America. We didn't do that. We didn't lead the Crusader campaigns that caused the killing of something like 5 million Muslims. We didn't do that. We welcomed the Jews after they were persecuted by the Europeans. But that was our mistake that we welcomed them. Now they are provoking the whole East and West against us. Shredding us part by part. All what you see in Syria. For, this, for the sake of, this, of the so-called chosen people of God. All what's happening. The Iranians are helping. The Russians are helping. All nations are coming to shred Syria. For the sake of what? Weakening all the surrounding areas against Israel. Cleansing all Sunni fanatic Muslims away from Israel. All for the protect, maintaining, serving the people of Israel. Why? They are the chosen people of God. I want to, I want, you know, I was looking at Netanyahu and to see, does he look like chosen people of God? Mm. Golda Meir. <clears throat> chosen. Look, look, look. If, if God <laughs> had chosen them, I mean, to choose them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had put some, some, uh, subhanAllah, complex or signs even left on the face. Or this, what's, what's his name? This uh, Sharon? MashaAllah, chosen, chosen person of God. He's a mass killer. He's a great terrorist. 
And Allah kept him for something like 15 years on the bed. He cannot die. He wished to die, but he could not die. But what do you consider this suffer of life is nothing compared to what Allah is preparing for those people. They think that this is their test, that Islam was descended on poor people, um, umma, ummiya, you know. Why God did not send the prophet to California? Why not to Sydney? Why, did, why didn't he send the prophet to Toronto? To Mecca? Is that fair, God? You didn't say that about Jesus. All of you are happy with Jesus. And Jesus is Palestinian. I know you drew him. Well, you're supposed to do that with blue eyes and yellow hair because he should be looking like American. But he's from Palestine. And Palestine is 100 kilometers away from my, from my homeland. Only 100 kilometers. And he's Palestinian. No, he's not Palestinian. No. He looks Swedish, <laughs> Scandinavian. No. SubhanAllah. So you see, this, you can sample the greatness of this Prophet. He gave 80 sheep for someone who caused him a pain. But the Prophet did not care about the pain it was done to him. He was caring about the stick that touched that man. Anyway, فَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ لَا بُدَّ مِنْ نَفَادِهِ فِيهِ وَلَوْ تَحَرَّزَ وَتَحَصَّنْ What had been decreed and decided on man, it must take place. Even if he, if he were to fortify himself, to protect himself, put himself in Hassan fortress, that doesn't, that doesn't make any difference. لم يمنعه ذلك من قضاء الله وقدره. All this will not be prevent him from the qadr, the qada and the qadr of Allah. Nothing. أينما تكون يدركم الموت ولو كنتم في بروج مشيدة. Wherever you may be, death will overtake you, even if you should be within towers of lofty construction. Just ask those who accuse us with terrorism. <laughs> who shot down, collapsed, destroyed, devastated block number seven in New York City on 9-11? A building by, its, by itself. Nothing touched it. Nothing touched it. Neither fire nor any attack suddenly by itself in 45 seconds. And it's more than, I think, 60 floors. Just like that. Who did it? It's a big conspiracy. It's a big conspiracy. وَإِن تُصِبْهُمْ حَسَنَةٌ يَقُولُوا هَذِهِ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ وَإِن تُصِبْهُمْ سَيِّئَةٌ يَقُولُوا هَذِهِ مِنْ عِنْدِكَ قُلْ كُلٌّ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ فَمَا لِهَؤُلَاءِ الْقَوْمِ لَا يَكَادُونَ يَفْقَهُونَ حَدِيثًا Whatever you may be, oh, we mentioned this. <coughs> ah. And if evil befalls them, they say, this is from you. Whenever any, anything good befalls them, they say, this is from Allah. Anything bad, evil befalls them, they say, this is from you, Muhammad. It's because of you. قُلْ كُلُّمْ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ Say, all are from Allah. So what is the matter with those people? They can hardly understand any statement. مَا أَصَابَكَ مِنْ حَسَنَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ Whatever comes to you of good is from Allah. وَمَا أَصَابَكَ مِنْ سَيِّئَةٍ فَمِنْ نَفْسِكَ And whatever evil befalls you is because of what, is because of what your soul had already earned. وَأَرْسَلْنَاكَ لِلنَّاسِ رَسُولًا And we have sent you 
to people as a messenger. وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ شَهِيدًا And Allah is sufficient as witness. مَنْ يُطِعِ الرَّسُولَ فَقَدْ أَطَاعَ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ تَوَلَّى فَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ عَلَيْهِمْ حَفِيظًا Whoever obeys the messenger had already obeyed Allah. But who, but those who turn away, we have not sent you over them as a guardian. Whoever obeyed the messenger had already obeyed what? Allah. Look, a woman came to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and said to him, Look, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, do you say that picking the eyebrow, eyebrow, right, here? Picking the eyebrow, the eyebrow is haram. He said, yes, it is. She said, look, I have memorized the Quran from its A till its Z, and I did not find anything mentioned in it about that. He said, did you read it? She said, yes. He said, if you read it, you would have found it. She said, I'm telling you, there's no mentioning to this. He said, no, there is. She said, where? Tell me, huh? tell me, where? He said, he said to her, مَنْ يُطَعَ الرَّسُولَ فَقَدْ أَطَاعَ اللَّهِ Whoever obeyed the messenger had already obeyed Allah. Huh? Allah, she understood the message. That means the evidence is not only in the Qur'an. Because how many things the Qur'an had left its ruling to the Sunnah? Tens of thousands of things. One of them is how many rak'ah? Salat al-Fajr, al-Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib. What you should be saying, all these things are left to the sunnah. If the sunnah is not evident, that means there is no evidence about what we do. So the sunnah is evidence. And that's why this was, we call it a notice, a smart notice that Abdullah ibn Mas'ud had given to the woman. She thought that he should be bringing the evidence from the Quran. And suddenly she, she found out that, what? The sunnah. Then he said, the, the author, And the servant of Allah should know that it had been preceded, it had been known already in the knowledge of Allah, every single event and action that is going to be taking place by his creatures. فَقَدَّرَ ذَلِكَ تَقْدِيرًا مُحْكَمًا مُبْرَمًا And there is nothing that he has created in either the heavens and the earth that can contradict it or add to it or erase it or change it or decrease it or increase it in any way. He said he created everything with a great due measuring assessment. وَقَالَ تَعَالَى وَكَانَ أَمْرُ اللَّهِ قَدَرًا مَقْدُورًا And he said the decree of Allah. Uh, the decree of Allah is قَدَر مَقْدُور يعني it had been destined and that destination is going to take place. There's no way. As some people said to me, don't you fear, for example, somebody threatening you? I said, no, no, no. No matter what they do, they're not going to delay my death. Will they be delaying your death? No. I have many enemies. And they say to, to me, wait, we'll show you. I said, the best time you can catch me is at Fajr time. I'll be taking my steps to the masjid. You're welcome. Nothing will stop me, Allahi, from going to the masjid. Nothing. Do whatever you want to do. Because if something happened to me while I'm taking the steps to the masjid and I die there, those steps will be steps to go to Jannah. I don't care. I like uh, this uh, poetry. Man lam yamut bisayfi ma tabi ghayrihi ta'addadatil asbab wal mawtu wahidu he who had not died because of the sword 
will be dying by other means. The means are frequent, but the death is only one. The means are different, frequent, but the death is only one. كما قال تعالى في كتابه خلق كل شيء فقدره تقديرا he created everything and decreed it decreed it in a detailed way and Allah's command is decided by decree then the author said فويل لمن ضاع له في القدر قلبا سليما he said, Woe unto him, the one whose heart had lost in the matter of Qadr. Because there are many people, they were confused. They, were, they became deviated in the matter of Qadr. Some of them said, Allah does not decree except what is good. So what about the evil? No, it was not Allah. So is there any other creator? So who, who's the creator of the devil? Then... Then you must fall in this consequence that you should be believing that there is God for good and another God for evil. And some other people said, Allah is the huh, decider of everything. And they included the choice of the human beings. They said they have no choice, in fact. Their choice is metaphoric, it's not literal, it's not true, it's not in reality. You know, Metaf metaphorism, we call it in Arabic, majaz. In Arabic we say, Al-majaz ma yajuzu nafyu. Al-majaz ma yajuzu nafyu. One person was saying to me, you should be believing in metaphorism. Metaphorism, yani, it's not real. It's not true. I said, thank you for saying it's not true. Thank you for saying it's not true. You know what? You are metaphorically smart. I said, what? I said, you, should, you told me to believe in metaphorism. And I'm saying, you have metaphoric smartness. You have metaphoric mind. You are metaphorically honorable person. You are smart metaphorically. He said, no, don't say that. Okay, so don't use, I, I don't like metaphorism, especially regarding matters of unseen about describing Allah, what he should be and what he shouldn't be. It's not your business to make decision whether this is metaphoric or, or me, not metaphoric. In Arabic we say, al-aslu fil kalam al Meaning when you speak to someone, okay, it should go directly to the reality. For example, if you say to your wife, if you say to your wife, go to the kitchen, she will not be saying to you, did you mean I go metaphorically to the kitchen or there is a literal, meta come on. Or someone ask you, uh, are you here? And you say, yes. Are you metaphorically here or literally you're here? You know, if you use this kind of language, khalas, you cannot understand people, and people cannot understand you. Or if you make a metaphoric appointment, okay, let's set a date. What, what time are you going to be here tomorrow? Uh, five o'clock. Metaphorically, or literally you'll be fi at five o'clock. Speaking with people, you can't catch people. You know, this... Metaphorism was the techniques of those who have evil statements and they want to run away from the meaning of these false statements. You find this mostly with those Christians, Baptists, etc. Any, anything you bring to them from the Bible, this is metaphoric. So I say to them, all right, so Jesus is not really the Son of God. He is metaphorically the son of God. They say, no, no, this, this is not metaphoric. So metaphorism is under the desire of those people. It has no ruling. It has no law. Anytime you desire to be metaphoric, it becomes metaphoric. This is a very important subject, by the way. It is very important. 
فويل لمن صار قلبه في القدر قلبا سقيما لقد التمس بوهمه في فحص الغيب سرا كتيما وعاد بما قال فيه افاكا اثيما. I don't know if I can translate that. Look, he says, So woe to anyone who argues with Allah concerning the decree and who with a sick heart starts delving into this matter. In his misguided attempt to investigate the unseen, he is seeking a secret that can never be uncovered and he becomes a sinful liar. Well, he wanted to say that indulging yourself in the matter of Qadr is dangerous for you. That's why Abdullah bin Umar, radiallahu anhu, I'm, I'm going to end with this. <laughs> Narrated in Sahih Muslim, that people came to Abdullah bin Umar and said, Oh, Abdullah, we have such people who are yataqaffaroon al-ilm. They are tracing knowledge. They are speaking with knowledge. يَقُولُونَ لَا قَدَرْ وَالْأَمْرُ أُنُفْ وَالْأَمْرُ أُنُفْ يعني مستأنف by itself. يعني matters of events, the happenings of life are going automatically by itself without any kind of observation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, Go to those people and tell them. Abdullah ibn Umar said, Go to those people and tell them. Wallahi, as long as they have this belief, that if they pray, their prayer will not be accepted. Nothing of their good works will be accepted. As long as they have this kind of belief. Until they believe that Allah can, wa lam yasha' lam yakun. Whatever Allah wills will take place. And whatever Allah doesn't will it to be, it will never take place. وَالَّذِي يَحْلِفُ عَلَيْهِ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ بْنُ عُمَرِ لَوْ أَنْفَقَ أَحَدُهُمْ وَزْنَ أُحُدٍ ذَهَبًا لَا يُقْبَلُ مِنْهُ If he were to spend the same weight of the weight of the mound of Uhud as golds, it won't be accepted from him until he believes soundly, properly in the matter of Qadr. That's why the author was threatening those who delve themselves in these issues that they are throwing themselves in a big risk. Is there any question you'd like to ask before I... Any question? Subhanakallahum bihamdik shadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa